It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mark, who is a co-founder and technical director of Antic Entertainment. Mark began by developing professional quality sci-fi themed computer games in his spare time during the mid-90s, distributing them through the internet. And during university, he founded his first company, Iron Fusion Inc., and developed a fully featured multimedia game engine and an online project management system. Iron Fusion's products cater to various academic institutions across North America, including Niagara College and the University of California at Berkeley. In 2003, Iron Fusion won the McMaster University Campus Incubator Grand Prize of $25,000 for best business startup. After joining Digital Screens in 2004, Mark was a major contributor to several games, including Pariah and Dark Sector. He left in 2008 to co-found Antic Entertainment to execute his vision of creating casual games for the hardcore player. Antic won first prize in the Venture London business competition earlier this year, Junk Battles, Antic's first browser-based casual core title, went live in August 2009. Mark? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Mark Michalik. As you heard, I am the co-founder and uh, technical director of Antic Entertainment. Now, today my talk is going to be about Antic Entertainment's latest web game, Junk Ballads. Now, you may have seen in the program that uh, although it was introduced as a post-mortem, I used the term a post-vitam. You might be wondering, well, what, what does that mean? Well. My CEO came up to me a couple weeks ago, Frederick Lilligren, and he said to me, Hey Mark, I think it's coming up soon. And this would be a great opportunity for you to uh, do a postmortem on John. Now, for those who don't know what a postmortem is, a postmortem is essentially a high level analysis of the production quality uh, from beginning to launch of your game. And I started thinking to myself, well, that's not really what, we can't really do that with Junk, because Junk is a web browser game, and it's really only at about 30% completion. So I had to make up a new term. So I ended up phoning up a friend of mine who was uh, an expert in Latin, and uh, she told me, I asked her, well, what's a good word for after live? Is there something in Latin that I can use instead of that? And she went, well, you could call it post vitam, which is after life. So that's where I got the name from. And what I'm going to be doing today during this talk is discussing the good, the bad, and the ugly side of game development, both pre-launch and after launch. So before I continue, I just want to show with a show of raise of hands, how many people here have heard of Junk Battles? Raise your hand, please. Okay, not too bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, I'm just going to, for the people who, who might not know who we are and what we do and the game about, I'm going to go and explain about the game anyway. So, Junk Battles is a web browser game. Uh, what that means is that you do not need an Xbox, you do not need a PlayStation 3, or any other console for that matter. All you need is a computer with an internet connection and one of these four popular web browsers and you'll be able to play our game. So, the idea is, is no matter where you are, whether you're at home, whether you're at work, whether you want to take a break from studying and you're at a cafe with wireless internet access, or even if you're at an airport and you have a terminal nearby, you can have a game or two. So, Junk Palace uh, is based on a post-apocalyptic world. It was inspired by movies like, such as Mad Max, However, the game has a lot more of a lighter overtone. It is more quirky, it's more fun, and that is reflected in its art style. It, the main premise of the game is you collect parts, you like pieces of junk, and that can be anything from rusty golf carts, an old farm truck, shopping carts, outboard motors, or in this case, uh, a Dodge Lake Challenger, 
that you see here. And you take these parts and you go into your garage and you combine them and customize them into a vehicle that only you can do. And after you have done this, you go to our arena and you would battle someone who also has a fairly custom vehicle. Now, the game at the moment, and primarily, is a player versus player game. We do have computer AI as well. However, the battles are very short and intense, and they're meant to give you a very, very good experience in a very short amount of time. We like to use the term bite-sized entertainment. But why a web game, Mark? If you were so used to uh, making big budget games, why do a web game now? Well, that's a damn good question, and I'll answer that for you. It's a new space. Junk Battles is, with, with all these new next-gen graphics and new consoles, it's a new way of entertainment. Yet, at the same time, it's an old way of entertainment, because we can take the game concepts that are tried and true from games from the late 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, and we're essentially bringing them to a different medium, bringing them to a massive medium. We can do a game in a much smaller team. In fact, Antic Entertainment is currently eight people, and we're getting our ninth on Monday. So it's a much different sort of team dynamic than the hundreds of people that you may have heard of that are at the, the larger studios. That also means that it's a much, much smaller budget. In fact, in our estimates, we're expecting junk battles to cost about one one hundredth, so one hundredth of the cost of one of your larger next gen games. So that allows a small independent developer like Antic to be able to to be able to make a game like this and be profitable. And another great thing is that there's no publisher. I don't mean to offend any publishers in the room, but in, in many cases, a lot of people arguably say that they are a necessary evil, but here at Antic, the control stays within our doors. And is it easier? We were thinking, we were hoping, and we expected it to be. So that was also a big driving factor. Now, as I continue in most postmortems and post becomes if the trend may never catches on, uh, we'd like to say the, some basic statistics about the game. Now, since the game is still in development, these stats are as of last week. Junk Battles is written in at least four languages. And I say at least because depending on your, uh, your disciplines and your opinion, you may or may not consider HTML language. I don't. It uses a database to, to track and collect all the data amongst all of our players. And currently our data set is 154 database tables. And as our features grow and we need to track more stuff, that is going to grow. Junk Battles is almost 80,000 lines of code. So it's not your grandma's website of her dog. There's definitely a lot of code there. And all of this work has been done in approximately 70 man months, with the majority of that being in program. So let's talk about pre launch. To lay out the timeline on how things have gone, Antic was started in late June of last year, and this is where myself, uh, Frederick, and another colleague got together and decided that we wanted to make a customizable vehicle for our battling game. So, since that point, it took us approximately five months to really get excited about the idea and to iron out a lot of the kinks of the core gameplay mechanic, and we were ready to rock by late 2008. After hiring, Several programmers, excellent programmers. We continued and, and went steady all the way up until summer, where we launched to our friends and family online, privately, as a closed beta. And then, two months later, we went open beta live in conjunction with our uh, feature that was in Business London magazine.